All right, everyone. Welcome to another round of Roll It Out. So we're going to be rolling the body today. So as before, we're going to be using uh, some balls, foam roller. I'm even going to throw in, if you have a dumbbell or a water bottle is fine. We're, ju- we're not going to use it for any weight bearing exercises. We're going to use it as an implement to push down the ball. We're going to try to roll out the psoas a little bit, work a little bit more hip and glutes while we also work the feet and calves. So we're gonna stay a lot lower body today. Um, last time that we w- went a little bit more into the chest back area and try to get more hip and glute uh, opening today. But as we did before, if you need the chair, I didn't put the chair in today, but if you need the chair still to sit in while you're doing this rolling, you can. Let's go through our, our, our uh, pinpointing here. Again, if you have a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball, either will work. If you have a tennis ball, you're probably going to want to do a little bit more on the compressions that we're about to do. So the first ones we're going to do, we go right to the top of the foot and we push down. Again, if you have the lacrosse ball, that's fine too. You can push down. What we want to do is push down under the big toe and then move it into the next two toes, push down, and then move it to those outside two toes, push down. Let's go back to the big toe. One more time, push down. Those two middle toes, push down. Last two toes, push down. All right, from here, let's go into the middle of the arch. We're just going to step over. Remember, this is gonna be a little bit more painful if you have the lacrosse ball, so just use your best judgment. We're gonna kind of put the toes down, the heel stays up, and I'm just pushing into that arch. Let's go to the outside of the arch. So right, so we're right here now on the outside of the arch, just pushing down, and then back to the inside of the arch, push down, outside of the arch, push down. Very good. Let's go to the heel now, and we're just going to shift that weight on the heel. One time, and two times. Now what I want to do is I want to start doing what we call uh, just the rolling or the knee or the kneading. So we're just going to start putting some pressure as we do small circles under the foot, right? This is all we're going to do here. Again, if you need support, you can even use, if you have your taller foam roller, you can even use this for support. You can hold on to the back of the chair. You can even sit in the chair for this process if that feels better. But we're just rolling. Let's get to the heel now. Roll around the heel a little bit. Roll around the roll around the bottom of the arch. Good. Let's go to the bottom, the top of the foot now. We're doing a little bit of rolling. And remember, this isn't specific. It's not perfect circles. It's rolling the ball around. We want to get all parts of the foot here, making sure we're really opening up that fascia. Now, last thing we'll do, we're gonna, we're gonna put our heel down, we're gonna press on that ball, and then we're going to just push over back and forth. Now this is more of that ball, uh, foot going over the ball action, right? The, the foot is moving over the ball, so we're sticking the foot onto the ball and then just swiveling at our heel. Let's go ahead and do this a little higher now, without kicking the ball out. And then the last one is we're gonna go behind, I just wanna show you behind. So we're doing the same thing, but now our toes are down and we're moving our feet across the ball on the backside. Three, two, and one. Excellent job. Now, last thing on this foot is we go from foot, from front to back. So we're just gonna go front to back and then we're gonna bring the ball back. So front to back and then bring it back. Front to back and it's just looking, looks like this, just rolling that foot. Good. We're trying to move the tissue we're trying to move some fluid in the tissue remember if we remember our conversation or my conversation from last time is it's all about hydration in the tissue the more hydration we can move around the more pliable the tissue will be excellent job all right so that foot feels pretty good right now let's go ahead and get into our second side of the foot here remember we talked about the big toe first push down then the middle two toes, push down. Then those outside two toes, push down. Then let's go back to the big toe. We're going not under the toes, remember, under the under the pads right before the toes, but you're just kind of lining them up with the, with the big middle two toes and the other toe. Now this is the inside of the arch, push down. Outside of the arch, push down, right? This, is, this would be outside of the arch. And then this would be inside. You're doing basically two on each side. Good, and then we're gonna go shift over, and we're gonna push down on the heel, put that weight on the heel. Put that weight on the heel as you can. Excellent, let's start our rolling. Good, 
And the rolling can last anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute here because you want to try to get everything involved. Um, I love doing foot rolling at night or sitting sitting on a couch or sitting in a chair watching TV or even during the work day because we can do it anytime we're sitting down. We don't have to apply as much pressure. Standing is a lot more pressure, right? And we're, for today, we're trying to really isolate it. But if you're just trying to do this as maintenance, having a ball under your feet during your work day, excellent idea. All right, very good. Let's go ahead and make sure we get the rest of those rolls in. And then remember our last piece of this one, well, second to last piece is our kneading. Right, we're gonna go back and forth. And then I'm gonna move to more of the arch, kneading across. And some of these could be pretty painful if you've ever had plantar fasciitis or if you ever had any inflammation in the foot on the bottom of the foot, it's probably been done due to the fascia mostly. So sometimes this can be a little painful. So that's where you just gotta, you gotta use your own judgment. That's where the tennis ball may be a little lighter. Lacrosse ball, baseball, they're gonna be a little harder, but you just don't press down as hard. Excellent. A couple more here on this one. Very good. Now let's do our walk, walks forward, right? So front, and we just walk it forward. Then we bring it back. We don't want to go backwards because the, the way of the tissue flow is actually from front to back. So we want to avoid actually going backwards on it. We just want to go forward. We're trying to push that fluid through the foot, trying to go with the seam of that tissue. One more time here. Excellent. Very good. So we got those feet nice and rolled out, how they feel. They feel great. All right, let's go right up the body here. Let's get into our calves next. So if you have your foam roller, let's go with the foam roller. Now, here's a fun, uh, a fun thing you can do. If you don't have a foam roller, um, you only have the ball with you. You can actually take, take the ball and roll this along the calf as well. So sometimes people struggle with using the foam roller, but you can actually use the ball against the calf. You can even use it on the ground, right? I can, I can just walk that on the ground. I'm going to use the foam roller for these purposes, but if you want to shift to that to that calf using the ball, you can. Good, about four or five on each side. Make sure we get all of those calves. Excellent. Let's go ahead and switch the sides. Rolling it out. And remember, you can put the butt down in between each one if you need to. Excellent. Let's not forget our tibialis. So this is going to be where we put the, we, we basically, we have the, the pad here. I'm just going to take my hands in the front and I'm rolling on the front portion of that, of that shin, right? That front portion. This side where the bone is, you can feel the bone. There, there's not as much muscle belly on this side. There's a little muscle belly on that, that outside or the uh, outside of the ankle side. And then we'll get the other side. You will. Pinky toe side is where that tibialis located. Three, two, one. Good. Let's go ahead and stay in this position. We want to isolate the quads still. Quads and hamstrings. We're going right up the right up the lower body here. Good, let's lay over. Let's get those quads involved. Very good. If you looking to pick up running or just started running again because maybe a change in temperature or maybe the time is right, you may feel those quads a little bit more. Running is one of the best ways to burn calories, but one of the hardest exercises on the body. A lot of compression going through the body when we slam our feet down each time. So it's a really good way to really loosen out those myofascial tensions from all that compression. Because they tighten up right after that run because they're trying to protect us. So they, that's why we maybe go on that first run or first run in a while or maybe it's your sixth run and they just, everything feels tight. Part of it, fascia really wants to protect us from all that boom, 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 boom. And we really just want to 
just want to keep going, right? So this is one of the ways we can. We loosen up that fascia, tell them it's okay. We can do this. We can all do this together, right? Let's get into those glutes a little bit. Side here. We're going to roll here. We're going to use the ball in a second here too as well uh, to isolate some some uh, glute and piriformis. But right now we're on that good piriformis. So you'll notice I'm not even the butt's down here. I'm actually on the side of the hip here getting that glute medius. If I switched over, roll over a little bit, that would be the glute. And then I lean just a little bit to get that piriformis. Let's go ahead and get that piriformis on the other side. Excellent. So today we're going to work on a uh, psoas roll. So we've, if you joined me before, you've seen me roll the psoas with the foam roller, right? We've laid on it, foam roller kicking out, and we've been able to roll it. I'm going to show you guys today a little bit different way to roll the psoas using a ball. And a sort of the cross ball is fine here. If you ended up with like a golf ball or a racquetball, it's fine too. Uh, racquetball I'm not really loving because they're just too squishy, but they still can get the job done. But uh, my two favorites are the lacrosse or the tennis ball. They seem to be the most effective. So when we talk about r rolling the psoas, okay, so what I want you to do is from this position, I want you to find your hip bones, right? The top of your hip bones, or for me, they're right here. From there, the ball, I'm going to use the lacrosse ball in this case, the ball is going to go right inside that and then down like an inch. And that's going to be right in that pocket. That's where we want. And just kind of push it right in there a little bit. And you can feel a little bit of tension. Now, in that pocket, right, we want to move all around. So we can go a little lower. We can go a little more inside. We can go a little higher. Up here is going to be more hip flexor. Down in here is more psoas. So I want to show you upright position because we're going to go laying in just a second. But I want to make sure you, you guys have the positioning. All right. So we'll go through it again. So hip bone, hip bone's right here. Ball goes inside that, then down about an inch. Right in that little pocket is where we want this ball to be. So let's go ahead and lay to the ground. This is where you need your dumbbell if you have it, or water bottle, filled water bottle. What we're gonna use is we're gonna use this as an implement, okay? So if you, if you look at the foam roller here, this is going to be my psoas, this is going to be the implement to push it down. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna hold this formula down, is I'm gonna do these small little circles. One hand pressing down on the dumbbell, one hand holding, supporting, and then small little circles, just like that. Okay, I just wanna confirm this. So ball on here and just, if this is it, small, small little circles. Not looking for these big wide circles where the ball will kick out. Small little circles, push it down on that dumbbell. All right, now that we've gone through that, let's go ahead and put this into motion. Lay down on your back. I want you to bend both knees to start this out. All right, from here, relax the back. I want you to take your left leg, push it forward. This is just the leg I'm gonna start with. The right leg needs to stay bent. Now, the reason for this is because when we stretch both, we naturally arch our back. It's just what our body does naturally. So if we do this, we can still relax that back so we're not putting too much pressure. Now, back to the game. Find that hip bone. Ball right next to it and down about, about an inch or so. Ball on top. Hand holding on to the, to the dumbbell or water bottle. Other hand on top. Push. Small circles. Now, what I like to do, I'll just give you guys my little my little tip here is it's a little bit of a reach, right? So I like to take my foam roller and use this as a headrest because now it shifts me up and now it's not as hard for me to reach to, to do this, uh, this my fascia release on the hip flexor. And what you're going to do, small little circles. You're going to feel some spots. They may be a little numbing. They may go down. This is just like anything else. We want to make sure that when we feel those trigger points, those ones that maybe shoot up the hip, shoot to the back maybe even shoot down the leg those are our trigger points what we can do is just put a little extra pressure hold it for three two one and then small little circles and you're not gonna to move it around you actually you'll see me I actually have to pick the ball up the biggest thing we want to avoid here is just don't roll on the bone that hip bone or any of the hip bone uh you just 
you're not going to get anywhere because it's just skin and bone there. Just end up with a little bruising there. Good. And keep rolling around here. Feel out those hip flexors. If you don't feel it, you're probably not applying enough pressure, right? You want to you really press down and then press in. All right. Let's go ahead and try the other side. Good. We're pushing down. Find that hip bone, right? Fall over, inch down, and then we're pushing through. So I, for you, some people switch the hand. Uh, I tend to keep the right hand on top and left hand holding the dumbbell. Just a personal uh, feeling, but you can switch the hands if you need to per side. You may be like the left hand on it and the right hand swiveling and make sure that water bottle or dumbbell right anything that can i'm just showing you i don't want you to drop that leg i just want you guys to continue to see my small circles you want to keep this leg up one leg should always be bent one leg should be straight here's another little trick for you if you find a little spot you can press down on it open up this this leg like this and then bring it back in open it up like this and bring it back in and then start to do some little rolls and do the same thing that's just basically it's opening up the hip flexor a little bit more and the so out so you just get a little more a little more tightness and it allows you to trigger a little bit more myofascial release but the big thing we don't want to do is straighten it we want to keep it here we can open it but we just don't want to straighten that leg excellent couple more here three two and one excellent excellent job so that's our hip flexor so as roll really really good we did it with the foam roller but this really concentrates that uh that hip flexor and that um so as now let's talk about the glutes something we can do we can work on the glute one a little bit more isolated right so i'm gonna have this leg be bent this other leg and the leg i'm working on is straight now i can find the little target areas and i can just sit on them Right, and I could just move around and go, oh, there's a spot. And then I would just lean all my pressure over here, my body weight on that, on that ball, move it around. Now you could easily just use the foam roller here to get more surface area, obviously. But what we're trying to do is isolate some of those trigger points, some of those knots, those myofascial knots. So just moving this around is going, the higher you go up on the butt, you can just walk the hands back a little bit so you can add a little pressure. But you'll probably find more trigger points a little higher up the butt, almost in that lower back region. Not in the lower back region, but almost. And you'll feel some of those trigger points. You just let those kind of work themselves out. Let's go to the other side. So now you'll see I switch the legs. Same thing, just trying to find those trigger points. Excellent. Find those, find those points, a little sit on. This isn't really something where we're looking to do a lot of rolling like we did on the uh, flip side on the hip flexors. This is more find those spots, have a little seat for three or four seconds and then move that ball around. So you're just trying to find those trigger points. If you do find a little area, you can do a little wiggle on it, right? Do a little rolling, but for the most part, trying to find those trigger points. Excellent, let's go ahead and come up from there. So, so as glutes, hips, we did some quads, we did some uh, some some of the glutes. I don't want to leave you guys hanging on the back because it's everybody's favorite. So we've got about one minute here. So let's go ahead and just do a quick roll out on the back. At least it's my favorite. So it, it's got to be everybody else's favorite, right? So hands behind, and we're just rolling through. Remember mid back to upper back. Good, good, good. Let's go ahead and open up the left hand. Roll on those shoulder blades. Good, good, good. Let's switch it up, other side. And tighten that elbow in. Roll it, lower neck. Face of the neck, if you will, to mid-back. Three, 
two, and one. Excellent, excellent job on the rolling today. Remember, hip flexor stretch, even into the glute stretch, right, where we were laying down, pulling the, pulling the leg across. Um, another way to do the glute stretch is actually seated. If you prefer, you can, you can actually sit and cross the leg, push down, and then pull, reach across so that we feel it here. So make sure we get those stretches in. Today was more about rolling feet and hip and glute. Hopefully you're a little bit more loose in those areas and you'll join me next time. We'll start targeting total body every time, start really isolating some groups and maybe a little bit more tips and tricks. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Have a great one. See you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.